40 years later, Paul, does the goal get old for you? No, it sure doesn't for me. It's the only thing I did in 18 years of hockey, so how could it get old? <laughs> <laughs> What's it been uh, like being that guy over the last 40 years, the guy that scored the biggest goal in Canadian history? Well, I would say that I've tried to handle it as well, you know, responsibly. I, I think that I've tried to handle myself in a way that would be worthy of a Canadian. Uh, try to be a role model for younger kids and that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm actually very pleased with it. And, uh, and it's been a, a really nice ride. And the, the incredible thing is that uh, uh, you get new stories every year. Like it's 40 years later and I still get different stories of where people were and what they were doing. And so everybody's got a story and of course everybody loves to hear a story and so do I. Was it tougher to handle it first? And, oh, it was brutal. Yeah, yeah, brutal. When I come back, I, well, Ballard and I, I wasn't getting along with him. And, uh, and I had no spiritual dimension in my life at that point, too. And so I didn't understand forgiveness and I didn't know how to deal with anger and bitterness. But when I learned to get rid of that nonsense and, and take every day, even with cancer, I, like I refuse to let uh, cancer define me. I get up in the morning and I, it's going to be a great day. And, uh, and uh, you never know when it's going to over, uh, be over. And so uh, I just refused to have a bad day. How was your health? Uh, my health is, uh, I, I'm in a clinical st uh, a study right now in Bethesda, Maryland. I had a little bit of setback a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't go to uh, uh, Russia. I broke out and had a uh, reaction to the drugs, but we seem to have got that straightened around and I'm still in it. And uh, so it's uh, one day at a time. There's no cure for what I have, but uh, hopefully we can keep it at bay for a while because I'm having a great life. If I can just stay alive, it's perfect. <laughs> What, what is the prognosis? Well, it's, it's, it, it's a trial drug. And uh, the only thing you can do in Canada is, is chemo. And so it's uh, like my face is back to normal again. I have lymphoma. And uh, the, the, you know, the, the nymph nodes were up pretty big. But they're, uh, uh, they're, you know, they're reduced now. And so I'm feeling half decent. I'm down quite a bit of weight. And I'm down 18 pounds since I got... Uh, you know, can you imagine 32 waist? I haven't been able to do that since I was 15. So, uh, but overall, I'm not doing badly. I, and I got to pick my thoughts. And uh, like tomorrow, Ronnie Ellis's tournament. I'm not. I don't do two tournaments in a row. So you just got to pick your spots. 40, 40 years later, your um, your recollection of the of the eight games, and I mean, outside of the goal, your your top memory. Well, it was just, uh, you know, my biggest memory is that the thing maybe I learned, I didn't enjoy it. Like after the first game, there was so much pressure on us to win and uh, had the time of my life, had the series of my life, and I forgot to enjoy it. And I said, I, you know, I got to learn how to enjoy today. And it was several years later uh, because of Ballard mainly that I learned how to do that. But, yeah, that's my memory is, man, I wish I would have just sat back and, you know, sucked it all in, but every day it was, we've got to win, and if we don't win, we're going to be known as losers, and man, it, you know, it just was not a good time. Have you thought about what might have happened had you not scored? <laughs> yeah, I've thought of that many times. even told my wife, I said, you know, if we don't win the last three games, we're going to be known as losers for the rest of our lives, and so we, we I mean, we felt it, yeah, but I think that one of the reasons we did win is we, we never gave up hope. And when you have hope, I, I mean, there's there. And, and Tarasov said, you know, we can compete with the Canadians in terms of skills and speed and strength, but we can't match their heart. And I think that's what won it for us. I really do. I don't know how many people uh, remember. You also scored the winning goal in Game 7. Um, how proud are you of what you accomplished? Uh, two of the biggest goals, uh, easily the biggest goal in Canadian history, and maybe the second biggest. Well, if you want, you can add Game 6, uh, game game six, six game too, six, if you yeah, want to. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, obviously, I think it, it's a lot more meaningful if I had just scored the last one. But when you get three in a row... I mean, uh, I mean, I was lucky, that's for sure, but it was a wonderful experience. And the neat thing for me is, I mean, I wasn't an all-star, a Hall of Famer at that point, but it was really neat to, for me to prove that I could play at that level and play very well. And so uh, yeah, it was a great experience for me. Take me through uh, the, the final goal, the goal that we all well, remember yeah. in the picture. And... Well, I was on the bench, and uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to get back on the ice. And for some reason, I stood up and started yelling at Peter Mohavich to come off. And thank goodness Peter thought it was a coach yelling at him. And Peter jumped, uh, came over the boards, and I jumped over. Cornway headed at the far point. I yelled at him, and, uh, and uh, he threw it across, but it was a little too far in front of me. And defenseman tripped me. And I remember saying, I still have enough time because I'm 
you know, went through the whole team in the seventh game. But, but before I knew it, uh, Phil had whacked it at Trechak. He got the rebound. I shot it once. Trechak stopped it. And then I got the rebound and jumped into the air. And we've been celebrating now 40 years. Is that a, did you have a premonition when you were yelling at Peter Well, I don't know. It was totally, a, you know, it wasn't premeditated. I just, it, it, I, I can't even explain it to this day. I felt I had to get on the ice. Like, a tie is no good. And they were going to claim victory because they had scored more goals than we did. And so uh, it, it, I, I really wish I had an answer, but I don't. I just felt I had to get out there. I felt I could score a goal. That moment that the puck crossed the line, is that frozen in time for you? Did it happen in slow motion? <clears throat> Well, it did. And the interesting thing, my, my father died in 1968, and he really wanted me to be a hockey player. And I would never thought of him, the whole series. I was far closer to my mother than I was my father. But when the puck went along, across the line, I said out loud, Dad would have loved this one. And there was that touch of melancholy, you know, in that, you know, I think it's that father-son connection, maybe. And it only lasted for a nanosecond, then, of course, jumped into Cornway's arms and... But yeah, it, amazing, isn't it? Uh, I thought of my dad who had died in 68. But what's the Toronto Maple Leaf doing jumping into Montreal Canadiens arms? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I could have kissed him at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the team mean to you all these years later? I mean, well, these it, guys here see these guys. So. Well, it means that we, you know, we were voted team of the century. I mean, is that any good? Uh, they're putting us on the uh, Walk of Fame, uh, this the wall, you know, fame. Uh, uh, and it's just it's just wonderful to be able to play with the guys, with Esposito's and Mohavlich's and the Cornwayers, and not have to butt heads with them. And so it was a great experience, and especially you know coming back the way we did, and so uh, and the way Canadians remember it also. And the guys that I play with today, that you know they're just they get new stories, and, and they're good stories. Given this is the 40th anniversary, given your health situation, do you find yourself being more appreciative of, uh, of this moment? And what do you say to Canadians who really do regard you as a hero? Well, I think that yeah, I'm 69. And, you know, like I can't think of anybody that's lived a better life than I did. And, and, and like even today, even with cancer, I wouldn't change places with anybody in the world. And I think that Canadians, I mean, Canadians celebrate this. I mean, I get it every day. And I think it was a meaningful time for Canadians. We're alive and they can remember at that point. And, and so it's a, a connection point. And I think one of the things we don't do as Canadians all that well is celebrate uh, a lot of times. Uh, uh, but especially with hockey, like when, Corn uh, when uh, uh, Crosby scored, man, I, I mean, I was jumping up and down. I was, uh, and so I understand what Canadians were doing when I scored now. Was it nice to have that moment? Oh, uh, like oh yeah, and... for sure, for sure. Are you kidding me? I mean, when you represent your country, I mean, I think every Canadian athlete wants to put on the Maple Leaf, and, and it was a wonderful privilege to do it. And then, of course, the way it turned out for, you know, Team Canada, and especially myself, it was, you couldn't, I mean, you can't write a script. I mean, Hollywood couldn't come up with a script like this, especially for me.